Hey, this is Dan and Michelle from Honeymoon Always, and we have just uh, returned to the U.S. after living in Portugal for six months. Don't worry, we're going back to Portugal. But um, <laughs> coming back, we've always wanted to address like the comparison of the food from Portugal to the U.S., and when we came back, it just kind of smacked us right in the face, and we were like, let's do this now. So we wanted to share with you our experience of both eating in the U.S. and in Portugal. If you find this content helpful, we hope you will subscribe to our channel and follow along with us on Instagram at Honeymoon Always. So when we arrived in New York City from Portugal, we immediately sought out pizza. Absolutely. Not only were we hungry, but just in general, if you're in New York, got to try some pizza. We arrived at the pizza place, sat down, and within a minute had water poured for us at our table. And Which we would... didn't have to pay extra for. They didn't ask us about it. They just dropped by and did it. Yeah. Which is, if you're in the U.S., you're like, yeah, duh. But... We had forgotten about this. Yeah. And in Portugal, you have to, A, wait because the service is slower. So it's going to take several minutes before you get anyone to address you usually. And B, they are going to serve you uh, bottled water that you will pay for. So it's just like off the bat, it was like, oh man, I missed this. Yeah, it was really nice because usually there's this moment where they're asking you fresh or natural, sparkling. Um, there's all these options that you have and it's not clear what they cost necessarily. So having it be free and quick and easy and immediate, yeah. amazing. And then the refills just kept coming. It was just, <laughs> you don't have to ask. It's just your glass was always full of water. So that was really great. Yeah. Next, I ordered a Diet Coke, which they don't really have in Portugal. They have what's called, they do have something called Diet Coke or Diet Light Coke or something like that. Zero. Something like that, but it is not the same. And it came very quickly because again, the service is much faster in the US. There's this idea that they're gonna get you in and out and help you as quickly as possible. And that is a metric of success for a restaurant in most cases. Whereas in Portugal, you really have to learn to be patient and take your time. And you sometimes have to really fight to get the attention of a waiter if you really need it. Uh, sometimes it feels like they're actively ignoring you. And ultimately, it's actually really nice to sit and relax. They're not as in a hurry in Portugal to get you out of the table. And in most cases, they don't, like once you take a table at a restaurant, that's your table for the night. They're not really expecting to turn the table and get more money. It's just a completely different vibe. Yeah, which when you're not in a hurry, it's great. When you're hanging out with friends, it's wonderful. But we miss being able to just kind of plan our day to quickly grab a bite for lunch or something like that. Yeah. So while, we, you know, it's night, it has its benefits in Portugal going slow. We miss the quick uh, meal to be able to like be on the go, get things done. Yeah. Yeah. So then we had some delicious pizza, which was great. And we, we have, they have good pizza in Portugal. And we've had one place that, in Porto that was like really good, like top notch. But it was just like, oh man, I miss this good food because in the U.S. there is just a much broader variety of food and just really good tasty food. I don't know how to explain it. I know Portuguese people are going to come for us, <laughs> but I think the food is better in the U.S. Yeah, I feel like there's a larger variety and it's often a more well-rounded meal, whereas in Portugal I would find, you know, that it's a very meat and bread heavy, which is fine. It's just different. Along with that are the rating systems used on Google. I've complained about this in previous videos, but it's just not as widely used in Portugal. So when you see a restaurant that has 4.9 stars in Portugal, it's probably gonna be pretty good. But it maybe it will be medium, maybe it will be low, I don't know. It's, it's very hit and miss. And if something has very low reviews, that's also not super reliable because it could be they didn't like the way a waiter treated them, which is, fine, but you know, we're not always going to have that one same waiter. Um, and so you really have to kind of read through the reviews in Portugal and really try to interpret what's happening. And it's more or less a guessing game. And your best bet is to go based off of someone's recommendations. Whereas in the U S especially in New York city, a 4.5 star review means it's going to be really good. Right. We stopped at a restaurant that was 4.5 stars for some Thai food and it was the best Thai food I've had in six months. Yeah, it was really good. So, then we got our check, which comes a big difference from the U.S. and Portugal is that in the U.S. we have a huge tipping culture. And for me, I did not forget about that too much because I still in Portugal feel weird not leaving a big tip um, at every meal. So like I haven't gotten used to that. So I was like happy to pay the 20% or whatever. So, but that's a huge difference. 
it wasn't a big deal for us. And um, we're just still used to that. But it does add up in the U.S. where, so in Portugal, whatever the list price is, that's the price. Taxes included. So when it says it's 10 euros, it's 10 euros. And that's that. And then if you want to add a one or two euro tip on top, that's great. But in the U.S., you have the price and then you have to add tax. And then you add a 15 to 20% tip depending on how you feel that day, I guess. And so not only are prices generally a little bit lower in Portugal, but it's a flat price. So we definitely had a higher food bill than I, than I kind of expected when yeah. we were in New York. But one way that you can save on food when you're traveling in the U.S. is sharing meals, which is a lot more normalized in the U.S. So when we went to the Thai place, we added, ordered pad thai for the two of us and we just shared and the waitress did not think twice about it she just said oh for you for both of you and then brought it out we've shared a couple of things in portugal and sometimes they charge you extra just to do that or they just look at you funny like yeah you know, just is that all whereas in the u.s both sharing our pizza and sharing pad thai it was just like totally normal no big deal and obviously it's well known that the portion sizes in the united states are much bigger yes. which is is super true so Sharing is perfect and sometimes even like a little bit extra, but also if you get something for yourself, taking it home is super normal. Yeah. People do it all the time. Whereas in Portugal, we haven't had a problem with it, but it's not quite as common and sometimes you have to pay extra to do it. Yeah. And I think with COVID, it became normalized with all the takeaway. So they have the ability to package your food for you, but sometimes they charge you for the containers and it's just been hit and miss as to whether they are really ambitious to package your food for you or if they like are kind of annoyed by it in Portugal. Yeah. So then we're on cloud nine. We're so happy that we just <laughs> ate this wonderful pizza and we're back in the U.S. and we're just passing all these restaurants like, oh, I'm going to eat there. I want to eat there. And we split our food so like we know we can eat in a couple hours to try something new. And then it hit our guts. <laughs> <laughs> so I honestly just felt pain in my stomach like within an hour or two after eating our first meal in the U.S. And as much as we just said all these positives about food in the United States, that was a quick reminder of why I prefer food in Portugal. And that is because my comfort and health is more important. So in Portugal, you're going to get fresh food. I don't know why. I don't know why it's so different, but we've been here like four days now, five, I don't know. But um, my gut still is just like not having it. It is Same. like painful sometimes. Like I just don't feel well like I did in Portugal. And I guess my assumption, I don't know, you tell us, but it's just the produce is fresher. The food is less processed. I really don't know. But we just feel better when we eat in Portugal. Yeah. So when I was in the U.S. a couple of years ago, I started having some significant gut issues I did one of those food allergy tests and I was allergic to like a bajillion things. And after I cut all of them out, I started actually feeling better. And then the pandemic hit and I stopped being as careful. But then we moved to Portugal and I can isolate exactly one thing that upsets my stomach, but my stomach has been happier in Portugal than it has been in years. And so definitely coming back, it was like, oh. And not only that, my skin was better in Portugal. Um, so if you're someone like me who deals with adult acne, you'll love Portugal because for me, it helped a lot. Yeah, and me as well. And then one huge caveat we will say is that we don't eat much seafood and Portugal is very well known for their seafood. I like seafood, but Michelle doesn't, so we don't like go to seafood restaurants, but I've had a couple dishes here and there and some people really rave about their seafood. So if you are one of those people, you might enjoy the Portuguese food more than we do. Yeah, and I think it should also be said, because I, I can already hear like the native Portuguese people typing angry things at us for the things we said about Portuguese food. Obviously, food is a very emotional thing, and we grew up on American food. We did not grow up on Portuguese food. There's someone on Instagram who angry messages me every single time I even mention American food. Um, how dare you? Why would you even bother? The one thing Portuguese do really well is food. And the fact of the matter is, it's not my comfort food. It's not something that makes me feel like warm and fuzzy inside. Traditional Portuguese food, that is. I didn't grow up on it. Um, and so it is something that is delicious. It's good, but it's not my like favorite food. I think a Portuguese person would feel differently. And so I would actually be curious to hear what a Portuguese person who has been to America and eaten American food, what they think about the, the taste differences. And if it's like... Is it that, you know, it's just that it, you didn't grow up with it, so it's not your favorite food? Or, you know, if it really is that there's a lot more options here and, you know, more international foods in 
it tastes really good. Yeah, and I will say there is good food in Portugal. Yeah. We've had really great meals. In fact, one restaurant in Lagos was like one of my favorite meals ever. So there is really good food in Portugal. Just overall, if I had to say one versus the other, when it comes to flavor, uh, I would say the U.S. for us. <laughs> but it's not like you can't find really good food in Portugal. There's, there's some really great restaurants. It's just overall, that is our preference. But when you add in the way our bodies react to the food, <laughs> Portugal is the easy win. Yeah. So that is our feeling on the food in Portugal. So if you're going to visit or move, you're going to find really good food in Portugal. And your um, insights might respect you a little more. <laughs> so if you have thoughts or emotions about food in America versus Portugal, we hope you will let us know in the comments. But please be nice and let us know what you think. Follow along with us on Instagram and subscribe to our channel. We'll talk to you later. Bye.